Hi everybody, uh, Mayor Tom Schneider here at the intersection of St. Francis Street and St. Charles, uh, right before a fluorescent uh, rotary meeting, and we are dedicating a plaque in our walk through history to former city council member and former state rep and former uh, publisher, publisher of the Florissant Valley Reporter, David Reynolds. Uh, we're here uh, with a Rotary, right before a Rotary meeting, I'm going to introduce Steve Frank and he can say a few words about the uh, Rotary and uh, uh, Dave was a very active member of Rotary, also a very active member of a lot of different uh, organizations, a lot of different organizations in Florissant, uh, not only Rotary, but he was uh, involved in the uh, Chamber of Commerce and a net number of organizations uh, to benefit the city of Florissant. Uh, Steve, let's uh, talk a little bit about Rotary. Okay, well Rotary's been around Florissant for quite some time now and it's a, it's a very active club doing quite a bit within the community. Uh, Dave Reynolds, when, uh, when Dave was uh, with us, was, uh, was a very loyal member of Rotary and uh, uh, a, a very active member. So we really did appreciate everything that Dave did over those years uh, uh, with the Rotary Club, within the community, and within the state, for that matter. Thank you, Steve. Uh, before we uh, get to the Reynolds family, I, I just noticed uh, 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 Bob Garrett in the crowd. Uh, uh, Ken Fowler is here. Uh, th is there any other uh, former council members besides myself that served with Dave that I'm missing? Uh, he was a, a, a very dedicated uh, city council member and uh, so I'm really glad that Ken Fowler and uh, Bob Garrett could be here to share this moment. And now I'd like to turn the uh, microphone over to Teresa Reynolds. Uh, she's uh, one of the Re Reynolds children. I guess you're the youngest daughter, right, Teresa? That's right. <laughs> you just want me to do introductions then? Yeah, just talk a little bit about what, whatever, you want to, whatever you want to talk about. Oh, I'm not ready for that. Um, you know, Dad was, always active in, Dad was always active in politics, and he loved it, and we are really honored that he has this plaque on Florissant's walk now. So uh, most of my siblings are here. I'll introduce them. I'm here with my husband, who's somewhere here in my family. My brother Dave couldn't make it, but his wife is here and uh, some of his family. Let's see, who's next? Uh, we'll put Matt here with his wife and family. And then Mary's here and then Dan and his family, and then finally Tim and his family. And then my dad's siblings are here, his older sister. Okay, <laughs> Carolyn and her husband, um, his sister Kathy, his brother Steve, and his brother Mick. Is that okay for names? and assorted lots of nieces and nephews. I could go on all day with everybody that came, but we really appreciate everyone coming here. Thanks. Thank you, Teresa. Now I'm going to read the... Uh, just going to read the uh, inscription on the, on the plaque. Uh, uh, David L. Reynolds, uh, 7 November 1936 to 9 January 2003. The United States Navy veteran. He served from 1976 to 1994 on the Florida City Council, uh, Council President in 1979. He served as President of the St. Louis County Municipal League in 1988 and was elected four terms as Missouri State Representative 1995 to 2003. Uh, he was former owner editor of the Florida Valley Reporter and member of many community organizations including Rotary, Knights of Columbus, and the Chamber of Commerce and he operated out of this building right across the street when he uh, ran the Florida Valley Reporter. So uh, anyway, congratulations to the Reynolds family uh, to the Rotary for your continuing good works and uh, uh, this is our uh, 18th uh, plaque in the uh, walk through history and uh, later this month we're going to be uh, dedicating a plaque to the late Don Bond and then uh, a little bit later this year uh, Charlotte Ballard will be only the second female to be recognized on our Walk of Fame. She was uh, the Missouri's first master plumber. So we have a few more plaques to dedicate this year. Uh, thanks everybody for attending and uh, we will just continue uh, advancing the progress of Florissant that Dave uh, uh, so nobly uh, worked so hard to, to, uh, to help with. Thank you. Good morning, everybody. Uh, Mayor Tom Schneider here at uh, our Urgent Care. It's the newest uh, health care facility. It's at the location of the old Halls Ferry Inn. 
We're so proud to have this facility in the city of Florissant. Uh, as you may know, this was uh, a site of a fire uh, when it was known as the Halls Ferry Inn Jazz Bistro, and then it was an eyesore for uh, quite a long time, longer than we wanted it to be. And we're so happy that now it's going to be used for productive services uh, to uh, serve the health care of the community. Heather? Thank you, Mayor. I want to thank everybody for coming out today um, and supporting our urgent care. This is our fourth location. Uh, we have a team of emergency room physicians that started our urgent care back in 2006, and we're going to continue to grow. And once again, with the support of people like the mayor and the chief of the police and the county executor, we want to uh, let everybody know that it is our goal to be a prominent figure in Florissant and thank you so so much for everybody uh, attending. I want to hand the microphone over to um, um, the county executor. Thank you. I want to thank everybody for being here and urgent care is a great needed service. It's better I'd rather come here than go to the emergency room. Leave the emergency room to the emergency and come here for urgent care. Won't be a long way. It's, it probably what 20 minutes the longest maybe? Who knows? But it's a great opportunity. It's a fourth one, and they chose North County for their fourth location. I couldn't think of a better place. Not only is it in North County, but it's in North County in the city of Florissant. It's a great, great location. Congratulations. All right, well, we do have some other uh, people from the city of Florissant that was already mentioned. Our chief of police, Tim Lowry, is here. And also uh, council members uh, Tim Jones and, uh, and Tim Lee are here. I don't know. Are there any other council members and, uh, that arrived besides you guys? Okay, uh, and also I want to welcome everyone, and uh, uh, Bob Russell, our Economic Development Director, I want to thank him for all his efforts, uh, not only on this development, but all the developments to, to uh, in, uh, in encourage the investment in the city of Florissant, but also want to uh, th thank the uh, Northwest uh, Chamber of Commerce, if uh, you want to introduce uh, some people that are here from that uh, chamber. President of the Northwest Chamber, um, Brian Goldman, and... There are many, many familiar, friendly faces that I have met recently in the chamber, and I, I appreciate you all being here. Thank you. Thank you, Heather. So on behalf of Tammy Durbin, chairman of the board, all of our board of directors, all of our ambassadors that are here, thank you so much for our urgent care. Mayor, county executive, thank you for being here. Scrubs, are you ready to cut this thing? All right. Rick, pull tight. Here we go. Heather, get in here. The docs, get in here. Ladies and gentlemen, one, two, three. Hi everybody, uh, Mayor Tom Schneider at Wedding Wonderland at 499 Dunn Road and uh, we're here with uh, Al Watson and Leah Weber. Uh, they probably look familiar to a lot of you because uh, they are on the, the Learning Channel, TLC, and uh, they are uh, contestants in the uh, next Great Baker. That's right. And uh, everybody's... Uh, uh, flocking to uh, Yaka Valley's uh, and Handel's to uh, watch the show every Tuesday night as they progress through the uh, through the contest. This is one of those uh, uh, reality show contests, and uh, we're just all excited about it. Uh, and I'm going to let them tell us about uh, how did you get involved in this? How did you guys find out about this? Uh, you get um, well, we f we found out uh, through an email blast that uh, TLC was looking for teams of two to compete on Next Great Baker, and uh, email came through Wedding Wonderland, and um, we thought that it had a lot of merit, and that it would be, good, be a good idea to uh, at least try to take the opportunity to, uh, you know, fill out the application, do some videos, and, you know, kind of kind of goes from there. But, um, you know, for the most part, we were, we just wanted to see if we could even get to the point of, you know, people just recognizing that, hey, there's good bakers from St. Louis, and, you know, eventually one thing led to the other, and uh, Leah and I uh, ended up being contestants on the show. Uh, Leah, what's it like being a partner with Al? <laughs> Working with Al is great. He's really talented, um, but we do bicker here and there. We're kind of like brother-sister bantering back and forth, but it was so much fun working with him, and um, I wouldn't have asked for a better partner, so I feel really honored to be, have him as my partner. What's the uh, most ex what's the most uh, rewarding experience about being on the show? You think? 
Um, I would say the most rewarding thing was just learning more about ourselves. I think we grew together not only as individuals, but as teams, as a team and as decorators too. So it was really cool to see, you know, how hard we can push ourselves. You guys seem to have a, a great chemistry. I saw the first episode, and I'm going to let you fill me in on the second episode, but the, the first episode, you hit the ground running, came in <laughs> second on the first contest. Uh, tell me how good it felt to get off to a good start. It felt great to get off to a good start. We just, you know, we, we figured, like, go big or go home. And we kept telling ourselves, we're not going home. We're not going home. And just our work ethic together, we have a really strong drive and passion. And I think that our teamwork is really great. Al, where did you learn uh, about the baking uh, skill? Well, uh, I actually started baking 15 years ago. But uh, lately, I owe the... Uh, talent of decorating to uh, the owner of Wedding Wonderland, Michael Tim, um, and without his knowledge and expertise, I don't, you know, I, I wouldn't be the decorator I am today, and so a big thank you to him for, for teaching, you know, both myself and also Leah uh, for, the, for the talent that we actually showcase on the show. Well, Michael Tim, I, I saw him last night uh, at Yacovelli's with you, I saw you at Handel's, and uh, he was uh, very humble, uh, very proud of both of you. Uh, but you uh, really poured the praises on, on Michael and gave him a lot of credit for, uh, uh, for influencing your skills and, and, uh, and Leah's. Um, I, I, and how long has Wedding Wonderland been, been How long has it been here, this shop, do you know? Uh, Wedding Wonderland's been here almost 30 years. And uh, we're, we're the premier wedding cake uh, shop in St. Louis. Um, you know, when we when we read Facebook reviews and and things of that nature, um, you're always hearing that the brides love their cake. They always recommend uh, their sister or their family to go get a wedding cake or a birthday cake or any type of cake. And uh, it's really great to hear all these you know awesome things from the city of St. Louis and also from Florissant. And so, um, you know, we uh, we work hard, we play hard, and we try to send out the best product possible. We have a lot of uh, delightful surprises uh, in Florissant. Uh, a lot of them have to do with uh, food. F Florissant residents love their food. Uh, <laughs> we have food truck nights. They flock to that. If I have a, a town hall meeting, not so much. <laughs> <You know? laughs> yeah. But we did have uh, Wedding Wonderland cake at the uh, town hall meetings and the 75-year uh, celebration. I really appreciate it. It was very well uh, received. The cake was terrific. Uh, the decorating was wonderful. Uh, and, uh, but let's get back to the show. Uh, I know everybody is just so excited about uh, uh, a Florissant team being in a national TV show. Uh, how did that second episode go? I missed it. Uh, tell me how, how, how that second episode, or go ahead and tell, me about the, tell us about the first se and second episode. Okay. Well, I'll, I'll, start with the, uh, I'll start with the first episode. And uh, the first episode was kind of one of those things where you actually get introduced to how the show's going to work. And so walking, you know, into the set, we're told that we have 45 minutes to make a uh, dessert that represents your hometown. Well, naturally, uh, we're the Midwest, we're St. Louis, and so uh, gooey butter is the first thing that came to mind. And uh, with our gooey butter cake, we, uh, we did very well. We came in second. You know, we always strive to be in first, but, you know, we'd rather be up near the top than in the lower ladder. Um, and so from there, the, uh, the, cake, the uh, cake challenge stemmed from how well you actually did with your hometown dessert, and it gave you an advantage uh, going into that cake challenge where we actually, Leah and I, uh, she actually picked uh, Chinatown. And uh, going to Chinatown, we had to make soup dumplings and then also eat them correctly before we could move back to the set and work on our actual cake, which is inspired from... Uh, you know, the, uh, the events and things that we did in Chinatown. Leah, why did you choose uh, Chinatown? <laughs> I picked Chinatown because above each one they had little captions and it said, no soup for you. And I'm a huge Seinfeld fan, so I picked Chinatown for that reason. <laughs> it's not maybe not the best reason, but I'm really glad we went there because we had so much fun. And I actually had to drive. I've never been in New York before. Wow. And I had to drive in the streets of New York, and it was pretty hectic. And I was, like, yelling at Al, like, right or left, right or left, <laughs> which way? <laughs> well, what, yeah, one of the contestants had an accident. <laughs> yes, they did, and I was glad it wasn't us. So <laughs> I, luckily I had a good navigator with me and then you chose how did you how did you come up with what your your theme was going to be when you were in Chinatown what's what inspired you we were really inspired by the buildings because um, there's a lot of you know like the brick buildings with the flags hanging down and then um, we had to make the um, 
the dumplings. So they're cooked in like a steam pot. And then we did the Chinese to-go box and then the Chinese lantern. So awesome. it was all stuff we saw while we were in Chinatown. Well, tell us about the rest of the first show then. Well, then um, after we finished our cake, we got judged and we came, we tied for second. So we were super excited to get second in the hometown dessert in second place in the cake challenge. So we were on a high for sure. Great. So tell us, start, why don't you start off and and then let, uh, let Al finish okay. the uh, story on the second show. Okay. Um, well, our second show, the theme was candy. And we were super excited because who doesn't love candy cakes? Um, so we walk in, and there is a huge table full of just hundreds and hundreds of pounds of candy. And then Buddy tells us that we have to pick our own teams. So it's kind of like recess. Um, and we definitely didn't want to be the last ones picked. So we found our team really quickly. Um, we ended up being with the brown and the tan team. Um, and we figured we had a really awesome team. So we started making our cake. We came up with a candy mountain theme and there was, um, each town was like a different candy, like Chocolate County or um, Splash City, like all these different counties. It was really cool. Um, and we had to deliver them to Dylan Lauren's Candy Bar in Manhattan. Now tell us about the host of the show. How's, how is it like working with the host? Well, um, <coughs> I, I actually have never seen an episode of Next Great Baker until now, but uh, I have seen episodes of Cake Boss, and uh, I mean he's very eccentric, you know, on his on his shows. A lot of hand movement and just big wow, and uh, so actually working with him was it, it was a really it was really an eye opener because he's uh, he's very talented and, and knowledgeable, and so he was actually kind of like uh, a mentor to all the teams. Yeah. Uh, when we were actually on the show, he would give you advice. He'd show you how to do stuff, and so that was actually really impressive that. You know, um, he took the time to actually, you know, give a little bit of advice to uh, uh, myself and Leah and also all the other bakers. And so uh, he's also a guy that knows what he wants and he's doing very well for himself. And so for the most part, you know, I've got I've got good respect for him. Lee, what is your take on the uh, personnel at, at either uh, in front of the scenes or behind the scenes, the camera people, what, it was, what the atmosphere was like? Um, it was really fun working with all the different, you know, producers and the camera crew and Buddy and Jock and Bobby. Um, it was an honor, you know, being judged by those three judges because um, I'm, I'm a pastry chef. So Bobby Lloyd, she's like an amazing pastry chef and so is Jock Torres. So it was really cool working for them and hearing all their good critiques or bad critiques. You know, we really took them, took their advice to heart. And if they told us, you know, to do something differently, we would do it in a second. So it was really cool um, getting to know them over the course of the show. Is the cat got to kind of tune the cameras out while you're working yeah you have to just just keep your head down and work because they're literally like in your face the whole time and so a couple times you like just want to nudge them out of the way because they're <laughs> they're like all up in your business and you know you're trying to get a cake done and they're in your face it's kind of hard um, but it, it, you know you got used to it we were mic'd every day you know we had to wear a microphone all the time and so just one of those things it just became a routine habit what else do we need to know about the second show? So then the second show, um, we had to deliver these cakes um, to Dylan's Candy Bar, and we had to carry them up three flights of stairs. And this cake is like 300 pounds, so Whoa. it was definitely not something that I could have carried alone. <laughs> Neither of us could have. So we had all of us carrying it up the stairs, and it's still, like, we needed to call for help. It was that heavy. I saw Al, like, his knees were, like, buckling, <laughs> in the t and I was like, we need help. <laughs> Um, so we, we got it up there and then so the kids were able to vote for our cake and the judges voted for our cake and it turns out that we not only won the judges vote uh, we also won the kids vote so wow. we had a clean sweep it was and, pretty and awesome that was, that was the show then that was the show okay. yeah so we had immunity of, of not going home so All right. it was great so, so when you have immunity what does that mean you're not going home you survive right. another week so and, and, the, and then the other teams had to do a bake-off of, yes right? okay. yeah there was three okay. teams that had to do oh, an elimination okay. challenge uh, Al, tell us what you can about the next show. I think there's a little bit you can say, right? What the theme is or something? Yeah, uh, the next show, um, it's, it's actually uh, wedding cake themed. And this is also a uh, team effort again with uh, groups, of, groups of four. Uh, so four teams of four. And uh, I really can't go into too much right, detail, right, right. but uh, it's another great episode. And, um, you know, we'll, we're, we'll do our hopefully do our thing and uh, see how it turns out. 
Well, thanks to you guys and Wedding Wonderland and, and, and all your, uh, your hard work and your talent and your panache, <laughs> uh, Florissant residents are having a, a lot of extra zest, as if we didn't have enough things to do. <laughs> we got the food nights, we've got the Wednesday night outs, we got the uh, uh, concerts in the park, uh, we got the festivals. Uh, we, we've got all kinds of great things to do here in Florissant, and now we have Tuesday night Wedding Wonderland uh, watch to see how far our team goes in the Great American Baker. So uh, good luck in the rest of the summer. And, uh, and uh, before we close, uh, we're going to talk a little bit more about, uh, I think I had the address wrong before, Our Wedding Wonderland is 449, 449 uh, Lafayette or Dunn, Dunn, Dunn Road. <laughs> and, it was and it's in the same parking lot as Jacobelli's and just about everybody in Florida that's been here more than a week knows where Jacobelli's is. So if you can find Jacobelli's, you can find Wedding Wonderland. Obviously, the entire St. Louis metropolitan area has found Wedding Wonderland because they're the premier uh, wedding cake uh, supplier in the St. Louis area. And uh, let's just talk a little bit more about that. I know we talked about it before, but let's just uh, uh, you know, talk about the uh, number of uh, cakes that come out of here every month or every week or whatever. Okay. Well, uh, Mary, like I mentioned, we're the premier, premier wedding cake shop in St. Louis. And so on an average, we probably do... Uh, 30 to 50 weddings uh, a week during the busy season and in addition we do 3D's, flat sculptures, all occasion cakes, uh, birthdays, bridal, baby shower, uh, you know if, if, if you need a cake Wedding Wonderland will provide it and so we're located here at 449 Dunn Road and we're right behind Yacovelli's uh, restaurant and in the in the plaza directly behind their building and uh, our phone number is 314-837-5015. And you can find us at www.cakeshop.com. We also have a Facebook page, Wedding Wonderland. And in addition to that, we also would like uh, Florissant residents and anybody for that matter to also uh, go to Al Watson and Leah Weber, Next Great Baker Season 4. We also have a Facebook page. You can, you can root us on there. You can root us on at Wedding Wonderland's Facebook page. You can come with the Yacovellis. And so... Wherever you feel that you would like to cheer us on, we would really appreciate that. Great. And so, any final words, Leah? We also have a Twitter. <laughs> it's um, <laughs> at BlueNGB, so you can find us on there for live tweets during the show. I just want to thank you so much for this awesome interview. It's been great, and I just can't wait for everybody to watch the show. It's going to be a fun time. So Our pleasure. Yeah. And thanks for putting some zest into the <laughs> summer. <laughs> thank you.